Ken, as a tenured professor in your mid-40s, what made you think that you could change careers? Well, this is America, and you can do whatever you want to do. It's one of the great things about this country. And uh, I was, uh, what I was doing was very related to the career I'm in now. It was developing stories, developing writers, and of course, teaching a number of things that I no longer teach, like classical literature and Italian literature. Uh, and I do miss I do do miss that part, but it was basically an extension of what I've been doing all of my life, which is developing stories, analyzing stories, publishing stories, helping people publish stories, uh, and now getting stories produced into movies. So it's all united by storytelling. Uh, I had no idea which world was sort of the big, bigger world of ideas, the world of academia that I'd been in for 17 years or the world I went into. And I discovered that the world I went into was really the world of ideas because it's a world in which people are tracking ideas across continents to find out who owns the rights to a story. They're, you know, they, they pay lots of money to acquire the story, at least they used to pay lots of money. Uh, and they spend millions of dollars to turn the story into a movie. Um, and they're fiercely competitive about the world of ideas. It's, it, the motion picture business is the jungle of ideas. And uh, it's survival of the, the best idea and the best business people. I always say it's, it's called show business for a reason. It's not just about show, it's about the business of how stories get developed into movies that the whole world can see. I'm hoping we can go back to maybe right before you made this transition into wanting to be in film. Um, was there something that happened? Was there just a time in your life, in your mid-40s, where you just felt like, you know what, I, I want a new challenge? You know, that's a good question because it's, <clears throat> I, it, I've reflected on it all my life since then. And it was actually provoked by my receiving tenure. Uh, I actually belong to a untenured faculty committee against tenure. Uh, and one day when I was a Fulbright professor in Bologna, Italy, I got a telegram from the dean of the faculty at Occidental College telling me that I'd received tenure in my absence. And my reaction to it was not very understandable to my friends and colleagues. I, I became deeply depressed for about a year. Um, and it took me a long time to figure out why I was depressed. And it was because I'd really never asked to be in this golden cage where nothing can happen to you. Uh, it was like the most secure place you could be. And I realized at the time that my father's chief value in life was security. He was a child of the depression and security was all important to him. And I, I had to admit to myself that it wasn't that important to me. I never worried about being secure. I published lots of things and I was in demand as a speaker and just never had to worry about it. Um, and what my value was, was freedom. And I didn't feel freedom when in, under a, a structure where you had to behave a certain way and you had to know a year in advance that on the week of October 12th, you'd be teaching book eight of the Iliad. Um, and that it was wonderful to be teaching the Iliad, but to have to to know that a year in advance you're going to be somewhere. I now live in a world where I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, literally, and and, and it's complete opposite. It's a world. It's a free world. And of course, I realized as I got older that uh, freedom is as much an illusion as security. Both of them are illusions, but it was my illusion. Security was not my illusion, and uh, so I've lived with complete insecurity, but with the freedom to express myself creatively in every possible way, which is what the film business uh, allows me to do. And so that was very exciting to me. Do you ever tell people that, that if they're looking to be in a creative pursuit, whether it's being an author or screenwriter, or actor, that security is something that will probably not be part of what they'll encounter and to <laughs> yeah. be okay with that. Absolutely. I mean, this is not a career to wish on anyone. You have to 
you have a burning desire to do it and you have to be willing to sacrifice anything to do it and to persist despite every setback and I can tell you that this is a, a business in which a career in which this never gets easier I don't care how many movies you've done the next one is going to be the biggest challenge you've ever faced uh, the world changes all the time it's been changing ever since I've been in it which is around 30 years now and uh, it never gets any easier and it never gets any more secure and you know even if you had windfalls and lots of money you would put it into your next you know your next project because people in this business believe in what they're doing that's their most important common uh, belief and you can see it at the Academy Awards you, you hear the stories as they receive rewards that they never thought they'd get or have been waiting for a lifetime for uh, they all have one thing in common the, the ability to sacrifice uh, what everyone else considers the most important things in order to achieve the dream of getting the story told to the whole world and that's that's the the great thing about the career there's no limits to it it's infinitely challenging it's constantly challenging there are surprises every day uh, and it's completely unpredictable I'm almost thinking of a, a sales position like door-to-door -door where you have to just suit up and and go on your your in work your farm and it sounds like right. with this industry um, it, it's, it's an everyday sort of you have to be that person sort of drumming up leads and things like that yeah it's a completely self-starting business uh, you hear repeatedly from actors and from writers and from everyone that being represented by a agency does not really help because everyone said I always get my, I've always gotten my best jobs by myself and I hear that from musicians and from every member of this business that they get their own work and and suiting up is every morning is putting on your brain and telling it that it's got to be happy and go out there and it doesn't matter how bad things are uh, in reality you have to put on a happy face uh, and I've gone to many meetings that I absolutely did not feel like going to because something had just happened that was a setback and I just thought I want to stay home lick my wounds but I go to the meeting and it always turns out that those meetings are the best meetings that you go to and uh, when you walk out you think thank God I went I mean what would have happened if I hadn't gone and that that is suiting up that is definitely a kind of a nightly uh, encounter to put on your armor and go out there and, and you're working with people who are doing the same thing and that's part of the exhilaration of it is that you know that the person sitting across from you may have had worse things happen to him in the last 24 hours but he's still there on the job and putting on a happy face and getting it done uh, it's it's very deceptive and seductive uh, when people come here for the first time especially clients of mine I, I warn them uh, that they will be experiencing what's called the development dance where everyone will be extremely nice to them and extremely positive and then they'll never hear from them again and that's because people are doing their job and their their job is to uh, m find out what this person has to offer the world and if it's extremely exciting which is rare very rare uh, then you'll hear from them but most of the time it's not extremely exciting and, and exciting enough or, or, and or it doesn't fit the agenda of the of this person's company at the moment they have something too much like it in development or they have a boss who does not want to do that particular kind of thing etc uh, but their job is to be the best audience possible for any story that comes along that could be a dramatic story that people would you know would, that would attract audiences and so they'll they'll be happy in the in the meeting and then at the end of the meeting you know behind the back of the person who came to the meeting they'll make a decision about whether to pursue it or not and that's what you're up against so you are like a door-to-door -door salesman I always say there's a great blackboard in the sky that has every no you'll ever receive in your life written on it and finally a yes 
at the end of the nose. And the only catch is you can't see it. So what do you do? You, you go through the nose as fast as you can. That's the only way to deal with that blackboard. And uh, that's what successful people do in the business. They just keep getting those nose until somebody says yes.